The audio's good. I try, I'm try. i trying some new plugs. Tennessee Mike's here. Mr. Tube is here. Um, did you already get that? I think I just shipped that out. Um, let's see. Bill K's here. Celine Driver's here. Will Carey's here. Yeah, hopefully the audio's good. I had to switch out the little plug. Um, but these aren't even all in frame. There's too many watches. Bean Boy's here. Thanks for joining us, Billy. Uh, Cecil. Yeah, I started early. I started early. Uh, Greg's here. Nate Dog's here. Mr. Sylvia. Yeah, so per the title of the live stream, I was going to do, um, yeah, Calico. I know you complained last week about a crackle, so I thought maybe it was this little plug that I used for, a, so I replaced. I've been using that one for a couple of years. So I figured I'd throw out some affordable watches, and as I'm grabbing them, I'm realizing that I have a lot of affordable watches. This isn't even all of them. I have more. Yeah, old time tech. Um, yeah, so Raj is from the UK. Thanks for joining us. Jonathan says, evening, Rob, and everyone else. Greetings from Northwest Louisiana. Do I detect a rare presence of Zelos? Yeah, I have one Zelos on the table. I have a couple of more uh, behind, but I wasn't sure the price points on them. So I was trying to put out watches that are all under a thousand dollars. I'm not, I didn't check all of them. I'm pretty sure all of these are under a thousand dollars, not collectively, but like individually, they should be all a thousand. Um, and some even less than that, obviously, you know, that, that old $500 price point, that was like my comfort level. That's difficult to, to, um, to hit anymore. That's uh that's a pretty low number, but I think things are going to be very com uh competitive. Um let's see. Enrique's checking in. Um the other one Dane I have is that uh this one. Um I don't remember the price point on this one, so cuz I know it has a Swiss movement in it, so I didn't know if it was over a thousand. Yeah, that one. Hey, Matt Stingray is here, a.k.a. Rock the Watch. So, uh, let's see. It's just under 1000 okay. So it met, the, it met the criteria for sure. Will, get this, I'll tell you a little story. Because we're still waiting for people to come in the chat because I started at 8.30, not 9. This is um, Calico's. Bronze Avalon, which is awesome watch. I have the green one, uh, which is the better of the two, but the blue one is pretty nice. And, uh, oh, heh, rock the watch, I had to switch his account. Um, and when uh, Calico sent it to me, it was running fast. But it wasn't running, like, crazy fast. So it was running, like, almost 50 seconds fast per day, right? So um, I was like, well, I don't, that's not fast where it's like magnetized. I, so I, I wasn't really assuming magnetism. So I reached out to Wes, one of the owners of Notice, it's Wes and Cullen. And I'm like, hey, um, what should I do with this? It's running a little fast. Do you want me to send it to you or, or what? And he goes, sounds like it's magnetized. Try to demagnetize it. And I'm like, all right. Wes said, go for it. So I went ahead and threw it on the demagnetizer. I had to do a little trick that I do with it. I don't really want to share that information because I, I don't know. It's not like I'm a professional or anything. I'm just a, a hack doing watches and stuff. And it's a couple of techniques that I've picked up over the years. Um, and I don't know that I really want to share them because I, I can't confidently say that it works all the time. So anyway, I ran it through the demagnetizer. And uh, it worked. It's running at, I forget, I was showing Joe the pictures. I think it was running, after running it through the demagnetizer, it was basically running at like 
plus two seconds or something like that. Like plus minus two seconds. So yeah, it's crazy. So and then and then of course Calico's like, I bet you mine runs better than yours. So I had to throw mine on. And well, sure enough, mine's running at like plus four, plus five. So technically his does run a little bit better. But the green colorway is a better colorway, so I don't have a problem conceding that his runs a little bit better because mine's actually a better watch. So I'm fine with that. That's just a little friendly jab in them, guys. It's totally fine. They're both good. Green's better. So um, let's see. So, yeah, anyway, after I did that, then Calico was like... Um, yeah, don't don't sell that. I think I want to keep it. So, Will, I mean, you could probably work them over on it. That's between you and and Calico if you want to try to work them over on it. But as of right now, I think Calico wants it back. So, back it goes. Color of money. That's right. Um, let's see. Yeah, I actually have some other green ones here too. I have the uh, Swiss Watch Company, the automatic, the Hyper G. Grade 5 Titanium, awesome watch. It's not even running. Let's see if we can get it running. There we go. Nice, nice watch. I also have the green bezel. GMT, green GMT hand and the part of the bezel here. This is the Borealis. I think you can still get these. I'm not 100% sure if these are sold out yet. Uh, but they're probably getting close, the new Sea Storms. So, really cool GMT. And there's a limited edition Random Rob variant of that, non-GMT, but still. Uh, let's see. Hey, Kevin Hawthorne's here. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta take a sip. Um, Dane, there's your trolls. I don't know why Dane doesn't do those. Um, these Drakens are crazy affordable. You can pick up one of these for dirt cheap. Don't we have rules about bad joke? Uh, you, you guys just do what you got to do. You got the wrenches. If they can dodge a wrench, they can dodge a ball. Uh, let's see. Hey, uh, military minded. Uh, so it really only posts in like 720, assuming I got a good solid signal. If it's a little messed up, then you're, you might want to like close it out and then open it back up and maybe it'll be better. Um, hopefully. How much are the Drakens? Um, I did have them up on the screen. These are, these are like crazy cheap. Let me see if I can, I just had it up on the screen. Uh, these are four $4.99. These are $4.99. And then uh, these are $9.99. This is another one. But this is a, this one's Mecha Quartz. And then this one is actually a Solita SW330. I, I wore this one today. And this is a full loom dial. This is a beautiful watch. Um, do I have another? I think that's all the Drakens I, or no, I got another one right here. I forget how much this one is. Let me look this one up. Um, what is this one called? Is it this one? I'm trying to look it up on the computer here. Yeah. Uh, these are seven, these are 750, but this has the ETA. Uh, ETA 2824 in it and kind of like uh, hooded lugs there. The two tone with the green is this guy. That's the Borealis Sea Storm GMT with the Seiko NH34 movement in there. So that's a new, they're out. I mean, you can go on Borealis right now and pick them up. The one that is on pre-order on that one still, actually, though maybe maybe those are still pre-order. I can't remember. 
Also the one with the orange dial. Oh yeah, these are crazy. And these are like, well, this one and this one both have orange dial. But this this is the Seiko GMT. So that's uh, that's been out a little while. Those are like, what, 500 bucks or something. But this one, um, Signum, something like that. I think these I think these are like 300 bucks or something. And it's titanium, full loomed orange dial, crazy. And this is actually a blue ceramic. Uh, Dane says he ordered this exact same watch because he's a Florida Gators fan. And he said the uh, it's 400 bucks and the shipping is a little slow. So he's taking a little while to get them. I'm sure they're coming from Asia or something somewhere. Hopefully you get it. I know Dane struggles with uh, shipping sometimes. Hello, Mr. Felix. Thanks for joining us. And I think I've seen, uh, let's see, David's in here. I thought i seen, um, I'm scrolling back up here. Uh, just the watch. Yeah, just the watch. I thought i seen your icon there. So he's here. Did you like the Duckwork, Duckworth? Prestex Belmont. I did, um, and I'll be releasing that video probably pretty soon. Um, I don't have that watch here, though. I, yeah, I shipped those. Those have gotten shipped out. But uh, I got the I got a bunch of videos loaded and ready to go. I'm, I'm trying to manage the when they get released and everything. So, but even uh, seriously, man. Islanders. There's Mark over the uh, Long Island Watch is doing Islanders, and there is uh, a ton, a ton of different models and colorways from the brand, and they're all crazy affordable. So definitely another brand to check out. This one for the modders. If you're like a lot of modders, you'll have a bunch of extra parts laying around. Literally, one of my modding friends uh, put this together from spare parts i don't think he i think the rule because he did it for like a build that he was entering but the rule was to build it out of just spare parts so very cool try to read some comments Anyone else ever have the helicoptering issue with the Saliba SW200s? I've officially sworn off them. Same for STP uh, variant. Other Saliba variants seem to be fine. Uh, yeah, I think they did resolve that. That was in the winding mechanism marked for time. And I think the newer ones are, are improved or um, not subject to that issue. But yeah, I'm with you on that. Like if you go to the 300 or the 330, they didn't seem like they had the same problem with the winding so much as the SW200, which... Um, I don't know, does it, what has SW200 here? I'm not sure. The Dorenzo, maybe? Or no, that's probably a Miota. Uh, this should have a Salida SW200 in it. Uh, the Christopher Ward, but. Um, I don't know if any of these other ones have the SW200. This one, the Richard Harvey actually has a Ronda R150 in it, and I have another watch inbound i just got the shipping notification for it and it also has the ronda r150 so i'll have two watches with the r150 so i'll be able to get a better read on how good that movement is my total count on watches when i did my room tour in state of the collection i think i was around the 90 mark but that was a i did that over thanksgiving so what has that been like a week or two um, I think I might be at a hundred now. So a lot happens when, when you have the, the amount of watches that come through my channel, uh, and I've committed to like not selling them. So the, the ones that I take ownership of, additionally, I buy some watches too. So when I start doing that, um, yeah, the number goes up pretty quick. Gary, this is the Skurfa treasure seeker 
And I actually have another, I don't know what color it is, but I have another one of these inbound. Uh, a friend of mine is sending in for me to sell. And these are so affordable that uh, I might buy his too because it's going to be even more affordable on the used. So that's the other thing. A lot of these watches, you can buy them brand new at killer affordable prices, right? But then if you're patient, you can pick them up even cheaper on the used. Uh, just the watch says, do you have an ideal number of watches you want in your collection or just don't think about it? So what I'm doing is I'm actually building um, a watch library. So uh, there's really no limit. Uh, in my mind, you know, it'd be I'd be kind of curious to see if I can hit the 500 mark. But um, I, don't, I don't know. That's that's pretty ambitious. I know I can do it. It's going to take a little while, but I can I'm sure I can do it. Uh, but I, I need to build a wall in the room. Yeah, so it's going to be a library, but it'll have certain people will have access to that library. So uh, if there's a watch you want to check out, like you would a book in a library, you'd, it'd be the same concept. Um, but there would have to be um, collateral or something. Well, I, I haven't figured out those details yet, but it'll be something like that. I think people are asking about this DeVoso. Check this out. Look how thin this is. Oh, and I, you're right. I think this might have a Salita SW200 in it, actually. Look how thin the mid case is on this thing. It is crazy thin. And it has a nice double dome sapphire crystal. Beautiful gradient blue to dark, dark blue dial. They come with a bracelet and a leather strap. So you can go either configuration. Uh, these are... I think just under a thousand dollars. They're not super cheap, but I mean, you are getting a Swiss movement and a, a pretty good looking watch all, all together. Is the Invicta automatic? Um, I don't have an Invicta on the, well, I mean, I have one on the table, but it's, it's over here. What, what watch are you looking at that you think is an Invicta? Oh, the red watch? This one? This is uh, um, Aerotech, the Ace X. It's it's not even out yet. I'm, technically, I don't even know if I'm allowed to. Yeah, I can show it because it's on their website. It's not embargoed. Um, it is an Aerotech Ace X, and it is going to be a Kickstarter launch on January 10th, but... Um, I already talked to the owner and he's, he's already got 300 cases. So like, it's not like the, he's using the Kickstarter to fund the project. He's already funded the project. He's just using it more as a advertising medium, has a really nice bracelet, has a pretty unique case back with like goggles on it. And the dial is almost like, almost like a hammered dial. It's pretty wild. The thin blue Invicta, that's a... <laughs> It's not an Invicta. It's a Devoso. It's a Swiss-made automatic. So, a little different than the Invicta. Uh, let's see. What do I really think of on the Islander GMT? It does have a really good price. Paul, I almost bought that from Mark when I was at the Warren & Wound Wind-Up show in New York. Very tempted. I actually, it's a very nice watch. It does have the Salita SW330 in it. So that was a project that he had been working on for a long time. So it's, uh, it's a nice watch, but I forget what the price point on it was. Chris from the Watch Lounge is here. And, and of course, he's wearing his Tudor Black Bay 58 for his one-year anniversary at Luxury Bazaar. I put too much ice in that glass. Uh, Tennessee Mike thinks that Islander GMT is about eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't think they sold as well as they should have. And it's partly because he's got so many watches like these that are great looking watches that are like three hundred bucks. So, Chris is wearing his Casio F ninety one at work. I do have, where's it at? Oh, right here. 
I got the, I forget what model number this is, but I do have, this is kind of like a newer variant of the F91. I'm so bad with the numbers. Brave Sailor ended up gifting me this. What is the model number on this? Uh, W217. It's kind of like a little bit larger F91. Pretty cool watch. And they're crazy cheap. Uh, let's see, Nick. Nick, I started at 8.30 instead of 9. I, I'm just getting too tired, so I figured I'm going to do 8.30, see if that works. If 8.30 8 doesn't work, then maybe I'll go... Um, oh, Kevin, that GMT is 6.95 now. Man, he's probably like around 6.50, 6.95. That is crazy. Uh, let's see, Bro Moment says, what is the diver behind the green and black... But, um, this is another Borealis, and this is called the, shoot, <laughs> Just the Watch says he's got a couple of these W217s. Yeah, they're super light, nice large numbers, way larger than what's on like the G-Shock squares, um, super legible. What is this called, the Bull Shark, I think? Yeah, this is the Bull Shark, um, a bunch of different colorways of this one. This one on Borealis you can buy right now, and it is a smaller case. So if you prefer smaller dive watches or you just have a smaller wrist and that's all you can support, it's a 38 millimeter case by 47. So 38 by 47 on this guy. So plenty wearable for a lot of people. Haha, <laughs> Brave Sailor says uh, just, just the watch is why he ended up picking up this guy. So that's pretty cool. Nate Dog is rocking the green Willard. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, SKX mods. Oh, yeah, they're doing... Uh, where are my SKX mods? I have some. Hold on. I still need to build a couple more, but actually I need to reach back out to them because they were going to send me the new bronze case and uh, some other goodies. But this is SKX mod metal case with an AE-1200 modded inside it. Awesome cases, and of course I put it on a Vario leather. So, great, great company, great mods there if you're looking to do affordable mods. Take affordable watches and make them expensive, hit up SKX Mod, that's where you wanna be. Paul's wearing his second hour of gin clear on leather. That is awesome. I don't have a second hour watch right now. I had them in the past and I got rid of them. So the next time I get access to them again, I'm going to keep them. And that'll be added to the watch library. John wants to talk about the Discord. Um, it's so crude for me to like show it on the screen. So it's hard for me to show it on the screen. Oh yeah, Nate Dog. It lights up too, but it, I can't. I can't figure out how to keep it lit up. It only it stays lit for a little bit and then it shuts off. So the Discord, there's there's two. It's a major reward. Wow, it's staying lit up a long time. Um. Oh, there it goes. The Discord group is, there's two levels. There's founder and co-founder. It's a, it requires a channel donation to gain entry to it. Um, David, no, I'm not selling any of my watches. So I'm trying to explain the Discord real quick, if I can do it quickly. Um, within the Discord, it's kind of like a forum. There's a bunch of different topics. Typically, we stay on topic within that category. Oftentimes we ramble about other things in the wrong topic. That's fine. It's just a bunch of watch guys. Probably, I don't know, there's, I don't know, a little over 100 in there right now. Something like that. But we are expanding a little bit if people want to get in. And, uh, oh, Tennessee Mike just posted a link to a video. Um that I talked about the Discord. The main thing with the Discord is moving forward. I am going to do the Sunday fun days in the Discord first, which means all of the crazy good deals. Now, you keep in mind, I am getting bombarded with emails of people sending, wanting to send me watches for me to put on my Sunday fun day sale. 
and um, the prices are low, really low, because I set the price and I'm watching the market. The price is really low on used watches right now. So if you want the best deals on used watches, you want to join the Discord because that you're going to get first... Whatever doesn't get gobbled up there will make it to the main channel, but all the good stuff is going to get gobbled up in the Discord, is my point. The other main thing with the Discord is watch tours. If you join the founder level, which is, is pretty dang reasonable for everything you get, um, there's watch tours, which I just... What watch did I just launch? Oh, the William Wood. Where is that watch? Um, I don't even know where it's at. So I, I'll launch, um, I'm, I'm slow rolling it right now, but I'm, I'm going to launch a bunch of watch tours. Basically what will happen is there'll be 10 people in the founders group, um, that will be selected to be on that tour. And we're going to manage the tours a little bit better, but, uh, because we don't want the same people on every tour. So we, we need to mix it up a little bit. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. So basically say like, Say I tour this watch, okay, which probably will happen. Um, a bunch of people will say, yeah, I want to see it. And it doesn't cost them anything other than shipping it to the next person. So it's essentially you kind of get to see the watch for free for like, you know, three to five days or something, say, like roughly a week or less. Um, typically people will check them out for a few days, you know. Um, yeah, Stuart says fantastic group. He's in there too. So you get to check out the watch. And then you ship it to the next person, and and then that and then that guy sends it to the next person. Typically in the United States, we do have some Canadian fellows, um, and we actually have some Australian guys now too. And then we have a couple of people like in uh, Max's in France and stuff like that. And so those guys usually don't have access to tours. But if we have more, say we get like, you know, five to ten people joined up in Australia, then I'll do an Australian tour. You know what I mean? I'll ship to Australia. I don't really have a problem. Sh and I think that's why those guys join from other areas because I don't have a problem shipping to Australia or Canada or Europe or wherever. I don't have a problem doing that as long as someone pays the shipping or if it's a watch tour, maybe I pay the shipping initially and then I can get toured. But then once the tour is over, the watch comes back to me. So Joe and the Badgers here, he's actually done some tours. Um, so it's a good fun way to check out a watch that you probably wouldn't buy maybe even still wouldn't buy after you check it out and basically you pay the 10 to 15 dollars shipping to the next person i'm trying to think what other tours i'm going to do um one of these devosos is going to be on a tour one of these aerotechs when they get into production will be on a tour. The bull shark's going to be a tour. This um, borealis will be a tour. This draken's going to be a tour. Um, pretty much a lot of those watches. This watch actually went on tour. A bunch of people got to check this watch out. And, you know, then it gets entered into the library because when it comes back, there might be, this one's actually pretty clean, but, um, you know, there might be a couple little nicks or scratches on it, you know. Uh, 10 different people wear it if they accidentally bump a doorknob or something like that then it gets scratched so yeah dane ran that tour um calico says he founded the founder foundation of founders mm, i don't think so uh, let's see jeremy's here hector from winding crown says i've been a founder since the beginning good stuff thanks for being there appreciate it down in texas one day i might get down there who knows uh, yeah, John, definitely check it out. Um, I will say this because it's not for everybody. And what I mean is it's a very positive discord. It's very um, focused on, you know, the best parts of the hobby. So if somebody wants to try to join and um, come in there and stir things up and cause issues and stuff like that, you're, you're going to be there for probably about five minutes and then you're going to be gone. So that's the way that works. Uh, let's see. Um, somebody asked if I'm a Citizen Watch fan. I absolutely am. Uh, I have, well, I have this one for sure. 
I don't know if I have any others. I might have to go shopping for some citizens. I really love this particular model. They upsized it a little bit. I love the crown over here at the uh, 7 o'clock position. Um, it's just quirky enough that it really works perfectly. I was actually just talking to um, Calico earlier about getting a Destro, the uh, left-hand crowned watch. And I'm having a difficult time finding a an affordable one that I really like, right? Um, and now that I think about it, I already have this one, and technically it is a Destro. So just because it's not at the, you know, 9 o'clock position, who cares? So I might look to see what other colorways are on this. And um, maybe a limited edition, maybe something with a bracelet. I got to talk to Rich over at Saltzman's because that's who carries those. Sent you a vid on Instagram on my C63C lander a couple weeks ago, VRO. I'll have to check that out. I don't know if I was it. I don't know what colorway it was. This is the C63, is it not? So I have this one and I have the uh, smaller red one. So this is what happens when you don't sell any watches. These technically aren't mine, but um, they haven't uh, sent me a label to send them back yet. So I don't know what else to do with them. At some point, they may become mine. Uh, let's see. In your opinion, is the Citizen Pro Master a good alternative to the SKX? So this one? Um, oh, so you have you have this one, but on bracelets. So that bracelet uh, that's on the white one will fit this. I could swap it over. but So um, personally, I, I really like the SKX. For so many reasons. So I can't, it's difficult for me to say that this is better than the SKX. But on paper, this is better than the SKX. But it's different. So I think it coexists. So I don't know that you can say it's like better and it's a clear choice to buy this over the SKX. Because the SKX is just like, has that, I don't know, different kind of charm to it. But the Citizen, I don't know, is a little bit larger. So, yeah, better specs on this 100%. And, yeah, it's got the 8 Series movement in it, but it's the newer 8 Series movement, so it still hacks. And I know some people get hung up on that be like, oh, it should have the 9,000 Series movement. Who cares? It's got the 8,000. It's a solid movement. It's a day date, three-handed, and it still hacks and hand winds. So, like, and Sapphire Crystal. Right, Hector. And it still has the aluminum bezel insert. Thank God. I'm like, I, it's it's almost refreshing to me to see some aluminum bezel inserts. Um, the Devoso actually has an aluminum bezel insert. Big crown, yeah. Oh, speaking of big crown, I actually have. I know it's not it's not going to meet the uh, affordable. Criteria, but I actually have a big crown pointer date here. I released the unboxing, but if anybody's interested, these Oris big crown pointer dates are really cool. This one has a premium on it because it's a limited edition of this railroad. I'll have to get the details on it before I do the video, which I'll probably record the video tomorrow on this guy. But really cool watch. These are from. Again, Richard at Saltzman's. And yeah, 2300 bucks. Yeah, these are really cool. But 2300 bucks. that's why it didn't land on the table because it's not... I wouldn't classify this as affordable. Um, at $2,300 for this watch, yeah, it's a little bit much. Uh, Calico, no, I definitely need to see um, the uh, Olympus uh, from Zodiac. I need to get that one in. Yeah. This is a really cool colorway. It's very simple and tastefully done on this one. It's not, I don't know. Some of these big crowns, they have like more pop to them. And this one just doesn't have that. It's very just clean and normal looking. Anonymous Watch Guy says, Zin over Doxa. Uh, depends on the watch, but I could probably get on board with that. Is that a black or a green Oris? It's kind of like a grayish or black. 
uh, Nick V, am I into citizen depth meter watches? I had the Hyper Aqualand a while ago. That one I really like, but the newer ones, not so much. Uh, let's see. The Red Dial one wasn't mine, Isaac. The the Red Oris uh, was not mine. So that one did go away. That went away in a sale. But I do have... I own one Oris... And it's, it's this one. But again, I didn't bring it out because it's not really in the affordable category. But this is that sh um, Whale Shark GMT, limited edition, 43 and a half. Aquas. So, awesome watch. So, I do own that one. Uh, let's see. Did you pop for the Fortis yet? I have not. So I'm talking to the guys over at Fortis, Nate. Um, I've been talking to them a little bit more and more, and uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But uh, I'm trying to work with them so they're part of the process. So maybe I can get a discount on it, you know, and then maybe also develop a relationship with them to get other Fortis watches on the channel and show Paul's asking, do I ever review Hublot? I haven't even looked at them. I just talked to Nick at Exquisite earlier today and picked out some unique watches. So the next batch that I get from Exquisite are going to be some pretty fun stuff. I'm going to have a Seiko in there, probably a Grand Seiko. And then I'm going to have some pretty cool stuff, I think. Uh, out of the ordinary. Trying to uh, not really expand my horizons, but... So many people are focused on, this is going to sound weird because I know technically I am an influencer, right? But like I watch other watch channels and then they kind of influence me. So like when I was, you know, studying the Fortis F39, I was watching, um, what's his name? Uh, so bad with names. I was, so anyway, I watch channels. I watch videos on it, right? Um, Kevin, no, I need to reach out to Serica again as well. I'm, I'm just behind on all that stuff. But my my uh, video count to have, get videos made is actually a little bit lower, so I'll probably reach out to him. But um, And Dane, yeah, I, I hopefully this winter I'll do a quick trip to Naples. Hopefully I can make that happen. But um, TGV, what are you guys talking about? Urban Gentry, TGV? Oh, Influencer? Yeah, so here's his watch, his more re recent uh, release. Awesome job on it, by the way. And yes, this is a Helsin. Yep, this is my uh, Shark Master, and I have my old Shark Diver. I think if the guy ends up sending it, I have my old Shark Diver that uh, I bought and then sold to that to the owner of it now um, a long time ago. Um, uh, he's sending it in, so I'll probably be buying that back from him. Oh, no, it wasn't TG. I did watch TG TGVs, but it was uh, Peter Ca Costa. It was that one. I think he did a better job on the video. But because I don't like all the I don't need all the history of a company and everything like that. I can do that on my own. Um, I like to watch videos where it's just the watch and maybe a little bit of talking or explaining, but I don't need all the other stuff. But uh, what was I talking about? Oh, um, you know, like s s some videos will come out on a Zen or like actually a lot of the talk from a lot of channels have been about the Rolex uh, pre-owned market or whatever, certified pre-owned. Like I'm like hearing all that and I didn't watch any of the videos because I'm like, I don't care. Like it doesn't it doesn't bother it like it I don't need that information I don't need to know how the Rolex certified pre-owned system is going to work because I'm not going to buy a certified pre-owned Rolex I already knew it was going to be dumb like it's it's not for guys like us it's not that's not what that thing is going to be anybody that's in our circle that is going to be buying a Rolex is going to buy a brand new one at retail and if you can't do that then you're not going to buy, buy one probably Yeah, Mark, the dial is pretty awesome. Yeah. P 
Panerai? Never. I would totally rock a Panerai. There's a couple of them that I really love. The problem with Panerai is I'd have to buy it from an authorized dealer, and I'm not paying the Panerai price, so. Yes, Peter Katza. Um, does awesome. His voice is good, his cadence, cadence is good, and his video quality is professional because guess what? He's a professional photographer, so... Isaac is asking if I ever checked out Bond Clip watches uh, bracelets. No. Some of that stuff, like, I'll forget and I don't write it down. So if there's something you really want me to check out, send me an email. Send me an email if there's something you really want me to check out, um, and I can try to reach out to the company and do it. Just send it to randomrobreviews at gmail.com. Um, Mr. Tube says, you may have answered this before. However, do you have a favorite brand watch in particular. Um, favorite brand. Man, I, the fact that I have to like stop and think about it to try to like find that answer, I, I have to say no. I guess I don't have a favorite brand. Um, I'm, I think I, I like pretty much all of them for one reason or the other, even the ones that I won't buy and wear, I still like them. So as weird as that sounds, it's just, I can pretty much appreciate most watches for one reason or the other. Joe and the Badger says, buy a Vertex. I really wanted to. Uh, my fave is... Hector says my fave is Breitling. I have two Breitling, um, but my Zodiac collection trumps my um, Breitling collection. So I currently have three Zodiac. So, you know, is the Zodiac beat out um, Breitling? Potentially. I'm trying to think if I have, I th I'm sure I have more Seiko than Zodiac. Uh, one, two, yeah, I have a few more Seiko than I do Zodiac. So maybe Seiko, I guess, but then I have more, I have more G-Shock than I do Seiko. So is it G-Shock, Casio? I definitely have, if you count G-Shocks as Casio and then all my world timers I and uh, data banks and everything, I definitely have more Casio than all of them. Don't like Zodiac GMTs. I have the Topper Edition Pepsi and I love it. I, well, Mario, I can predict a Zodiac GMT in my future. I'll just say that. I can't really say anything about it, but I can I can kind of predict a Zodiac GMT in my future. Ken Spear checking in from Pittsburgh. Full-on John's currently wearing his Tassot PRX automatic black dial. Great watch. I did own one of those. Could be controversial, but I would take the Dorenzo over the PRX. Paul, I do actually want to pick up a Zodiac Olympus too. And anonymous watch guy, it will not be a Pan Am GMT. There's a different GMT from Zodiac that I'm going to pick up. That's all I can say about that. But yeah, I personally, I like this Dorenzo, the design and execution, and then it still has the integrated lugs, very similar to what the PRX did. But uh, yeah, Dorenzo is doing some amazing designs, and the finished product is is really good. So, let's see. Yeah, the Duren in the Dorenzo red dial, it makes sense to get the Dorenzo with the red dial because that's like their corporate color. So I get that. That's pretty cool. Try to read some more comments. You guys are keeping the chat steady flowing. I appreciate it. Gives me something to read and discuss. Did we talk about everything on here pretty much? Got the Notice, the Islanders, the Seikos, Citizen, the 
Borealis, the Sigmas. I think we talked about most of these watches. Like I said before, too, if you guys are interested in picking up one of these uh, sea storms, there is a Random Rob Crazy Edition one that is kind of like a Harlequin, I call it, but it's quad colorway. It's pretty fun, pretty cool. It's not a GMT. There's only 50 of them, and they're, I think they might be close to sold out. So there might only be a couple left. Uh, Razvan says, Tudor Black Bay 925 versus Tudor Pro versus Ranger. Tomorrow, I have to decide. You have access to all three. I've handled all three. I owned the Pro, sold it. I really like the Pro. Um, the, the thing I like about the Pro is it has like the loom cast indices. And I really dig that. And I wish the Ranger had that. If the Ranger would have had the loom cast indices like the Pro does, I would pick the Ranger. Now the Ranger looks like it does, and maybe that's enough for you. And it is a very clean, everyday, great looking watch. That being said, I would actually probably pick the Tudor 925. And I would tarnish the heck out of it. I would get that thing looking dark gray or black. Um, Shinola, somebody brought up, Paul brought up Shinola. Shinola actually has their GMT automatic uh, kind of sport looking watch. And it's very cool looking. And they just came out with a new uh, green dial variant with a stainless steel bezel. That one's really cool. There's a, a dealership kind of local to me. And I think the owner of the store reserved one for himself. So at the bare minimum, I'll hopefully be able to video the one that he bought. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Let's see. I found the Ranger boring. Wearing the black dial mule SAR. I just, Nilo, I just shipped that full loom white dial when I just shipped it back to Exquisite. Awesome watch. That is such a killer watch. Yeah, beyond that new... Uh, green dial GMT does look great. They nailed the color on that. That thing looks killer. That's a really good watch too. Oh, still not sure what I'm drinking. I didn't pour very much. It's just a small glass. Peanut butter and jelly. It's a uh, screwball peanut butter whiskey, which is made in San Diego, which I reached out to them. I haven't heard back from them, but I'm hoping to do a a random Rob meetup in San Diego in 2023. I was hoping to talk to the good folks over at Screwball and see if we could work something out, but um, I haven't heard back from them. I didn't really expect to, but... Um, and then I just put some, like, uh, grape... It's not... I don't think it's straight-up grape juice. It's, like, kind of, like, grape juice from concentrate but with everything removed and it only has 10 calories of serving so just kind of cuts into it a little bit yeah if you drive down to san diego I'll, I'll get the dates and stuff i haven't figured out the dates the only dates i figured out so far is i'm going to do a meetup in uh, louisville kentucky in uh, may and i have those dates figured out and i'm i gotta call and get like a block of rooms and figure out how many people are going to go and stuff like that but the the may meetup Instead of in Michigan, it's going to be in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Dennis, hey Rob, what do you think of Certina watches? The new 43 millimeter diver titanium, for example. Well, Certina's awesome. Titanium's awesome. 43, a little big for me, um, but I could see where 43 and titanium, or depending on your wrist size, will work really good for you. Did Seiko ever make a watch like that yellow dial coaster? Yes, they absolutely did. This is actually, so these are uh, from the Zimbi series. Um, I don't know what number this one is. Oh, no, it's number 10, right? No, they all say 10 on them. That one says 10. That one says 8. Wait, was this number 10? Did they do two colorways in 10? Did they do a green and a yellow? They must have, because this, so the date, the number on here was the number of the Zimbia. So it's, um, search up 
Seiko Zimbi, spelled like that, Z-I-M-B-E. S- search Seiko Zimbi number 10, and there'll probably be a yellow one and a green one, because, like, the blue one was, uh, that, you know, they, the date, so, like, this one says 8 on it. This one says um, 7 on it. So, yeah, Kevin says there was green and yellow. I'd never had it on the channel, so I I don't know what it is exactly. Um, is that a mini turtle? Is that what that is? Maybe? I don't know. Is there any Seiko hardcore fanboys to look that up? That might have been that might have been a mini turtle and they did it in green and yellow. I could be wrong, but I could be right. Isaac Boulder, you like those. Yeah, Kevin, mini turtle. I knew it. I could tell by the dial. I am still a Seiko fanboy. Boulder, you like those. I do, and I don't have any right now. Um, do I? I do not. I don't have any boulders right now. I can't. It's hard for me to say that I don't have something without actually looking because I'm not 100% sure if I do or not, but I don't think I do. Let's see, Mr. Tube said he may have to try that. If you're talking about trying the peanut butter and jelly, dude, 100%. Get the Screwball. Don't get any other brand because I've tried a bunch of other brands. Get Screwball peanut butter whiskey. Mix in some Welch's grape juice. Wasn't there a Zimby Monster at 1.2? Uh, yes, but I don't know what number that was. I think there was. Um, no, this is not, this one's actually not for sale. The owner of this watch sent in a few watches to sell, but this one was just for a video. So I need to make the video of this one and then get it back to the owner. So this one he's keeping. These are going to go up in value because I think these sold out pretty quick. I don't know how many they made. Does anybody know how many of these made? So however many of these they made, I think they sold out already, and they're already talking about maybe doing a, a new generation or something. Um, let's see, Seiko Marine Master 300 with 8L35 thoughts. Great movement. Formex Diver or Genoa Silent Service. Need your help. Decision. Paul. Well, I own the Silent Service. I don't currently have the Formex Diver, but I will be getting one pretty soon in like maybe a month or a month and a half i'll be getting the formex diver i will say stewart says they only made 500 of those see that's that's a lot of watches right but it's a very good design whether you like urban gentry or not but then additionally i mean he's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers so when you only make 500 of them probably gonna sell them and then collectors buy them just to resell them and stuff so um yeah, I would say, um, I don't know, these Genos are so good. They're so good. The Formex is really cool too, depending on how, what configuration you want to do it. If you want to do it in GMT or just the regular diver. Have you heard of the Hodinkee brand of watch? I have not. Which is funny because Hodinkee is in another language. I forget the language. It actually means watch or time telling. How's the quality of the Devosa? Uh, pretty well-built watch, a little bit light. Uh, I, I can't know, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head to kind of compare it to, but it's well-constructed. Um, the bezel action is not my favorite, I will say that. But it's, it's a really thin bezel, so I think that's part of it. Uh, maybe like a, I would say it's probably on par with like a Oris Diver 65. I would say that. It'd, it'd be right on par with that. I think Hodinkee, is that Czechoslovakian? I can't remember. You got to look up like translations and type in Hodinkee. It's spelled differently, but it just means like clock or watch or time telling. What do I think about the new Docs Army? Um, I I bought it. I owned it. Actually, killer watch. Um, I sold it just to like free up space. 
Slavic and Czech. Okay. H yeah, like that. Hodinky. Yeah. I discovered that like two years ago. I'm like, what? why is it called Hodinky? And then I, I, I looked it up and I, I figured it out. Kevin says I sold it within a day. That's, I don't think that's, I don't think I sold it within a day. I think I, I think I wore it a little bit, didn't I? I know I sold it quick, but I, I think I lasted longer than a day. But it was pretty quick. I'm looking at it as a four to five week ship time, but customized. So hard to argue with that. Hmm, not sure. Can you show the Dorenzo again? Looks pretty nice. Yeah, I'll show it. Do you want to see it on the leather or on the bracelet? The bracelet has the polished center links. I don't have a Diver 65 here. Tennessee Mike says it's 9.31. I'm going by the... Um, uh, the time that I've, I've been running for 56 minutes. So I'm going to go for an hour. I know it's the timings off on it, but here's the Devosa on wrist. It's super thin. It wears so good. It is a very nicely, uh, designed watch. And I think they're about 900 bucks. How, how thin is it? Let's measure it. Now this is going to be including the double dome sapphire crystal, which has got a decent dome on it. It's 12 millimeter with the double dome sapphire. Look at look at the dome on that. So this watch is probably like 10 millimeter thick. It's crazy thin. It's a 100 meter water resist. Similar to the Wise. Um, I can't remember the Wise. I probably should have kept that one too. Maybe similar to the Wise. Yeah, it definitely has a vintage charm to it, but with that gradient dial, that definitely looks more fresh and clean though, for sure. Great watch. Love the blue gradient dial on that thing. Yeah, so that, that thickness of it would be like a vintage diver for sure. And it is a 100 meter water depth rating on that thing too. So remember that. Thin wear is awesome, 100%. Orion, yes, Nate Dog has an Orion. Or somebody does. You know, I know what you're talking about though. The Calamity's thin. I don't know if the, is it called the Hellcat? I don't know if that one's really thin too or not. But the, the Calamity from Orion is like concave, so it wears really thin. John, John says I need to change the time on that. Yeah, I probably should because that kind of messes people up, doesn't it? I never really thought about that. Like, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I don't really care. Um, yeah, Chris, it's basically a kind of like a homage to the deep sea dial. But I should try, probably change that, especially when you guys are watching the live stream. You're like, holy crap, it's 1030. Yeah, I don't know what happened with um, Orion. Um, Nick was going to send me a watch, and then like we'd, we'd, we've been back and forth a few times, and he just never sent me anything, so I don't know. Paul says, thanks for everything, Rob. See you all later. Happy holidays, everyone. Thanks for chiming in, Paul. And, yeah, I'll be around. I don't have to pull a call for the rest of the year, uh, so I, I don't have a calendar right here, but... Um, yeah, so we got a couple more live streams, and I'm going to be off around, you know, Christmas time, so uh, I'll, maybe I'll do some random live streams, you know, if I'm bored or something like that. I'll be doing a lot of channel work and stuff, so a lot of uh, working with the Discord, too, um, launching, like I launched one uh, watch tour recently. It's a William Wood, uh, the sport-looking one. So, but I'm going to be launching, once I get that shipped out, I'm going to probably launch like a bunch of tours. Uh, so there's still room in the founders group if you're interested in that and you want to get in on the watch tours and the Sunday fun days and just the overall forum discussion that is in the Discord. Uh, email, 
at uh, randomrobreviews at gmail.com. And my admin, Tennessee Mike, will take care of you and get you all set up. It does require a channel donation, uh, so keep that in mind too. And it is, it's clean, guys. It's a clean group, so we have to keep it clean. All right. Let's kill the lights, check the loom, and then I have to, um, we can do a live and drink. I used to drink eggnog. I can't do it anymore because I, I stopped drink, drinking milk a long time ago, and it's so thick. I just, I can't do it. Like, I can't drink any sort of liqueurs or anything like that. It has to be, you know, either like a whiskey type drink or clear liquor. Making your own eggnog. I don't even know how you do that. That's crazy. All right, let's kill the lights and check the loom on some of these things because we have all... That's the other thing. You know, we talk affordable watches, right? We're thinking we're compromising something or giving up something. Au contraire, I think we're gaining some things. We're gaining value. We're gaining good specs. We're getting all of the modern materials. And then on top of that, we are getting industry-leading luminous like there's luxury brands that don't do this level of loom <sighs> what's not to love about the affordable micro brands and uh, other brands whatever it is whether you classify them as micro or not they're great watches absolutely love them all right guys thanks for watching i'll catch you on the next video